7.30. We're here early at the Shelby, the annual Shelby event. We brought our 67 Paxton supercharged car, one of 35 and the only one in white. So hang with us today. It's going to be a killer show. We'll show you some great Shelbys. We got two 67 GT 500s here, both inboard headlight cars, and they're two of the most popular colors back in 67. You got dark moss green and lime gold. So we have the clone to this 67 S code 394 speed car at the shop. Same color combination, almost the exact same options. But this is only the second Mustang I've seen in the thousands of Mustangs that I've owned that has the convenience control panel right there in the middle of the dash. If you remember, our red barn find 68 and a half R code cover jet car had that. I'm excited to see how low it is. <laughs> 15,937 miles. Get out of town. Yeah. These were, uh, the GTs were all disc brake cars too, which is really nice. Yeah. Uh, The first 50 cars were not, they were just drum brake cars. Go change the right front tire because it's blown completely out. I don't want to pull that car. But check this out, what a killer car. And a GT. Never know if you're going to pull it. Are you serious? You're all right. Good to see you. How are you? All right, buddy. Up, right there to be alive. Okay. Got here bright and early, I see. For Sean Patel and Mr. Peter Block. Well, no, it's going to be a great day. I I'm see that. I'm up in the Dodge, like, yeah, you can just park it around the corner down into the park. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I, I look down there, I'm like, if I pull that car in that parking garage, the whole front splitter will be left on the, on the ground. It'll come off. He's like, That's pretty great. He goes, okay, pull, pull, it, pull it here in the parking lot, but far away from the show, please. Thanks for having us here. Definitely. Happy Great to be show. Here. It's nice to see you as always. Isn't it? Yeah, this is awesome. It's, it's cool to see, actually see you in Dallas. I feel like we only get to run into you at like, right? car auctions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. we, we, the only time we ever see you is not in Texas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what's your pick of the show? So it's interesting. There's a lot of good variety out here today. I really kind of like the dog Shelby's. They're a little odd. Not people, many people see those out there, but being yeah, a teenager in the 80s. That out. So Carol taught me to drive the Dodge Omni GLH when I was 12. Okay. So that's my first recollection of him kind of being in the car world. And so it's fun to see those. They have not weathered well for the years by any means, but uh, it's fun to get them out here at the show and have people kind of take a look at them. Everybody associates Shelby with Ford, which is obviously a huge relationship there. Uh, but that Dodge here, it was a full decade, it wound up with the Viper, so that was kind of a fun, fun way to end the relationship there. Well, the cool thing about Carol is he did a little bit of everything. In his early days, he was racing the MGs. Correct. Yeah, we, <laughs> so, uh, okay. we got that first MG that he raced and won his first race in our family collection. So, Correct. fun. Well, I think my pick of the show is going to have to be the 67 dark moss green GT500. That's an awesome one. The restoration is over the top. And one of my favorite things about that car was just it's a finer detail, the radio delete. Yes. 
Yes. So, and it's not a big people pick up on that. It's just very few. Yourself. And then, so, I think my second pick is going to be that 67 Esco GT390 Coupe. Yes. Did you see that? I did. That was awesome. So, so great. I'm so surprised to get out here. Today. Great yeah. color. And, and it's only the second Mustang I've ever seen that has, I think they call it the control panel group, mm -hmm. you know, that has those four lights. Yeah. I'm crazy rare to see that. I like to pick out all the odd options. I understand. <laughs> well, I would, never, I would have never guessed that his pick of the show would have been the Dodges. Very yeah. cool. So it's fun. We did, I did a show with Jay Leno about five or six years ago. He had more fun doing laps in the Dodge Omni around Willow Springs. He spent like 35 minutes doing laps in that car. He just loved the little turbo kit with the front wheel drive. But there's something unique about this. They have not weathered well through the years. You know, the materials used were not great. One of, my, one of my favorite Fox body cars to drive were the four cylinder turbos. Sure, sure. A ton of fun. Yeah, a ton of fun. Yeah, right. so, there's a lot of good stuff out here today, though. It's tough to pick. Absolutely. You guys missed it, but it's an annual event. So if you weren't here today, be here next year. Thanks again, Eric. Thank you. Good to see you. What a great day at the Shelby event out here in Plano, Texas at the Legacy Building. It's an annual event. Again, if you missed it, we'll be here next year. Now we're on our way to Whistle Bridges for lunch. Pickled jalapeno pimento cheese. I love dips, I love pimento cheese, but I don't think I've ever had pickled jalapeno pimento cheese. It's like the most Chips. old man thing. Do you hear what Kelsey said? It's like a most, the most old, man, old man, thing. man thing he eats. That's good. You gotta try that, Cole. You're gonna be an old man one of these days. I'm in. I'm getting there. <laughs> and it's trying to get James to talk about the cornbread. Either you can't read or you're shy. What's wrong with you today? I'm shy, you know that. <laughs> so all you gotta do is look right here. Yep. Creamed corn skillet cornbread, jack cheese, zip code honey butter, and cowboy candy. Now you try it, tell us how you like it. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, it's taking you forever to try that. Are you okay? I'm fine. Well, how it's is really it? good. It's super sweet. It's really good. Outstanding. What kind of mess you got going there, Alex? Biscuits and gravy, but the gravy is like <laughs> not real gravy. It's sweet. <laughs> sweet gravy. Yeah. All right, cool. I don't know what she oh, said. I think, I think she said dilly dilly dip. Oh, oh. I'm just going to squirrel off real quick because I got out of double eggs. Look at that. Because you want one first? No, I don't want one first. Come on. I'm going for it. I don't even know what's in it. I don't even know how you grabbed that. This looks like a very good culinary day to me. That was a big word, Kelsey. You hear that? I did hear that. Here's a big bite. That's got to be best bite of the starters. Awesome. Buffalo cauliflower with a dilly dilly sauce. Orange Ritter. They got some cool stuff on the menu here. Top two for me so far. Pickled jalapeno pimento cheese dip. Devil day. I think we've mentioned this before. Whenever we're at a restaurant that has fried green tomatoes, we get them no matter what. They are awesome. Ooh, that is hot. Right here. 
stacking our plays. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to work out like this four times to make up for this. Happy incident. You know what's cool about Whistle Bridges? They have kids' meals. You see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got Chicken tenders and macaroni and cheese. Got to get the chicken and waffles because it's a Texas staple favorite. I actually got the Whistle Bridges sandwich because I had a star by it. It's not here yet, but the anticipation is killing me. Uncle Mike got a salad. What you got there, Uncle Mike? I got a salad. A salad! What the hell? The first salad I'm talking about. Yeah. So, Whistle Bridges was specialized in breakfast, and he's the first person in a year that ordered a salad. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? No, it's a good one. Good idea. Okay. Then I got a chicken baby. Wow, that was good. Look at that sandwich. All right, cut that in half. Let's go split this with Sean P because I want some chicken waffles. Garnish all gone. It's right there. Kels, what did you get? It'd be so much better. Kels, do what? what is that? Should yes. I pick it up or should I uh, use my knife and fork? Chicken mini with coached eggs on top. I agree. Ah, that looks freaking good. That's going to be a mess. It's got honey all over it, butter, biscuit, chicken, and it's hot. Right here. Salad number two. Salad. Oh, no. That's right. Hello, car world. <laughs> the Whistle Bridges sandwich is amazing. Kelsey got the chicken Benny, which is poached egg, chicken, pimento cheese, one of my favorites on a biscuit. Let's see if we can get all this together. Bet we can. There's chicken, there's the biscuit, pimento cheese. I love eggs. Wow, that's really good. Tastes like chicken. Tastes just like chicken. <laughs> no, it's really good. All right, Zach, you can eat now. Thank you. All right, guys, Kelsey's leaving early, so you got to do the out. I don't have any here, but since I'm jealous. I was going to save it for dessert, but I got it. Please like, tag, share, follow. We already have that. Zach got us a whole So where are you, where are you going? To a birthday party. How old are they? Two. Two year olds at birthday parties? Yes. Okay. Bye, Kelsey. Bye, Cole. You're going to miss a hell of a dessert. I just had dessert. You can still eat dessert? You yes. can eat more? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Go fast and have fun. One to ten. Ten. Seven. So we just finished at Whistle Bridges. The food really was outstanding. Great breakfast food. Great lunch food. Now, what are they supposed to do, Sean? Like, tag, share, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Hey, we're back with an update. We've missed a few lately. We're going to do our best to keep them going. What better update could we possibly have after the Shelby event than a Shelby update? Let's see what Alex is doing. Anybody at home? No. No? <laughs> How are we? Good, how are y'all? Good, good, good. So, where are we at? Just got the motor back last week. Got the intake. It just, uh, it got dipped and cleaned on the inside. <laughs> got to put the correct one on it. Yeah, we, so before we started on the motor, the motor appeared to have been never taken apart. Yeah. We sent it to the machine shop and they in fact said it had never been apart. Um, so it is fully rebuilt with the best parts available okay. at this time. That's a 427 intake. We were going to go with that. I thought better of that because it had the original intake on it. Yeah. We discussed it back and forth. I do like the fact that we cut about 75 pounds going that way. Yeah. But original intake's down here, dated uh, April 68. Is that right, Alex? Yep, with the original carb. Original carburetor's here. Which the code on the carb is a C80F-9510AA list 4174834. We looked that up, it's correct. That is the correct intake. Now, and I agree with this, we started doing this a couple of years ago. We fire these built motors up if they weren't a dyno motor, which this is not one that was done on the dyno. But very reputable machine shop. It's actually a friend of ours. Yeah. Did it as a favor, because these are tough motors to build that take a long time, they're expensive. But we fire them up with new distributors. New distributors, new carbs. And new carbs and get them running right. 
And then if the next owner wants the original distributor back in it, which unfortunately got broken yeah. coming out of it because it was stuck. Uh, this engine, near as we can tell, has been sitting since around the 1976 range. Yes. So it had been sitting forever. Yeah. Um, but what distributor are you going to use to fire it up? Uh, I've got a dual point sitting over there I'm going to use. And, uh, let's go from there. Correct exhaust manifolds. We had the radiator restore, which came out beautiful. Look at that. See the thumb will come up there. Got the date codes on the side. And we really, really have struggled over time to find a radiator shop to restore these radiators in these cars. And we had fortunate enough to find a place that I don't know how we didn't know about this. It's been in Fort Worth since like 1946. It's called Kirby's. Yeah, really cool place. But all the five of them turned out great, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Did some beautiful work. So these are the seats out of the car, the actual original seats. Oh, they came out great. They, they really, really did. For, and again, this car has been sitting since around 1976. Yeah. That long. So actually it's 77. I looked it up today, but whatever, 46 years. Those are the original Kelsey Hayes wheels that came with the car. Yep. Alex had the tires off. We sent the wheels out, had them made sure they were straight, true, tested for stress cracks, all that stuff, and had them restored. Uh, we use Star Tire, they do a great job for us. Yeah, they do. But Alex took pictures of all the date codes and the Kelsey Hayes stamps on the inside of the wheels. We'll pop those up, it's really neat. Uh, last time I was down here, Alex brought this to my attention. Still has original brakes on the car. Look at that. Unbelievable. The chassis in this car is amazing. We're gonna show that to you later. But what's really, really neat is the interior. Carpet's all original, back seat's all original, steering wheel's original. It's missing the emblem, but we have one. Uh, correct NOS. Door but panels original. It's the best regional carpet I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. What are the miles on this car? Like in the 40s? 43, I think. 40 exactly. So the new carpet, the loop is not exactly correct. Mm -hmm. To have a Shelby with a 100% original interior, original seat covers, and original carpet is amazing. So Zach will show this carpet. I mean, we have not dyed it. This is the original carpet. It has been cleaned. We have a special process to do that. Maybe we'll tell you, maybe we will. Dash is cracked. Uh, but here's the biggest thing we found out. We were told by the lady that her husband insisted this car was original paint. Yep. We discussed this on the original video. Jeff Snyder looked at it. Not only does he have one of the top restoration shops in the world, Jeff's Resurrections, he said, Dennis, I believe it's original paint. Absolutely. So Alex and Josh brought it in, and y'all, correct me if I'm wrong, you spent an entire week very carefully cleaning and polishing this car, right? Inside and out, door jams, trunk, engine bay, and, it uh, is, and the wheelhouses everywhere. This car is 100% original paint. Yep. And what, 97% rust free? Oh yeah. So we crawled over this car for hours until you found just a minor spot in it? One spot, that's it. Okay, and which we'll sh show when it comes up. It's basically is a rust free original paint KR. The reason I'm so excited about that is, I mean, since you've worked for me, we've gone through, what, 30 Shelbys? Probably. There's only one original paint car, which is the Black Hertz car. Yep. And it wasn't 100% original paint, but it was, no. it was pretty close. This is 100% original paint. This one's the best. Beautiful hubcaps, which we haven't, these haven't been cleaned yet. Believe it or not, and Alex and I both know this, it is harder to find correct Shelby hubcaps than it is to find the 10 spoke wheels, mag stars, or any of the other wheels. Absolutely. Crazy. But you can find early Kreger wheels, you can find a nice set of hubcaps, and they're beautiful. They're all four of them. Now, we are trying to get this car back as close to stock as we can. Yep. We're not claiming it's going to be a hundred point taken to the car show Survivor, but it is going to be real close. Survivor paint, Survivor interior, Survivor chassis. Now, it is going to be correct, all correct, day coded, original transmission, motor, carbon pan, everything's correct. Yep. But we had to rebuild everything because it just sat too long. So, we're putting Scott Fuller Reproduction's exhaust system on there. This is absolutely the finest stuff out there. It's got all the correct date codes, all the direct, correct part numbers, all the correct Ford script and Fumico where it's supposed to be. And I think I brought my clipboard. Did I set that down? Anyway. This exhaust system will separate the men from the boys. I, you have a good idea what it costs. Oh, yeah. 
What do you think this exhaust system costs for this car? Well, and you haven't put it on yet. I bought a few in the past. Okay. What are you thinking? Thirty-five hundred. You're real close. Four thousand one hundred forty-nine dollars and seventy-three cents. Boom. But I tell you what, it's worth it. It's correct. That is absolutely everything that is Kong Coors correct. Well, something we uncovered about this car that we didn't know when we bought it, this car is out of Kansas. And I don't know how I not, had heard about this guy, but there was a famous guy up there called Tall Paul, Paul's Ford. He did a lot of high performance Mustang stuff. Here's a really cool ad from there. He called himself the Mustang King High Performance Headquarters. That's in fact where this That's car cool. came from. So in doing the research on the Marty Report, that's how I found out Paul's Ford sales gotcha. and figured out who Tall Paul was. Kansas City, Missouri, which we'll post that. And if you see my little sticky note at the bottom, the county of where this car was sold in is Wyandette, Kansas. Ha. Why am I bringing this up? Check this out. Correct, original, not reproduction, never issued, 1968, Wyandette County, Kansas license plate. Well, that's cool. That's what you've gotten yeah. on this car when you bought it new. So we're doing our best to get it back to where it was when it was new. I mean, we got the statistical analysis report, which we generally don't have when we buy these cars, because it takes a while to get it, because Marty's got to do a bunch of work to, to go through all the numbers and figure all this stuff out. But anyways, out of the 4,451 68 Shelbys, 1,571 of those were the 500 KRs, which was the most popular car yeah. and the highest build number, I believe. 1,053 of those were fastbacks, the other were obviously convertibles, which we've had two of recently. 530 of those 1,000 cars were four-speed cars. And here's where it starts breaking down and getting pretty rare. Only 84 of those were candy apple red, which is a great color on this car. How many of those 84 candy apple red cars do you think got original paint on them? Maybe one or two. That's what I would guess. 74 had the black knit vinyl bucket seats, which is what those are. The other 10 cars probably had saddle interior. Yeah. Um, this is a 350 track lock rear diff, which is kind of nice. Fast out of the hole, but not screaming there. You can't take down the highway. And two of those cars were sold by Paul's Ford. So there you go. No pressure. When are you going to get to drive this thing? I'm hoping next month. Next month? Yeah. Okay. Can I hold you to that? Absolutely. Nah, I'm not going to pressure him. But there you go. Me and Alex, you've done an amazing job. We'll do a little flashback to what this car looked like when we pulled it out. Sweet. There's your problem, Zach. Ain't got no motor in it. Okay, so Alex, it's only been outside for less than a week. good car it was but I mean I didn't think it was gonna clean up this good I mean it's Neither amazing I. I mean look at the body is crazy straight are there any dents in this car at all well the rear balance it's got a little bit yeah but that's it but the car itself I mean look at this y'all didn't do any paper nope no zero paper. so Alex get this done in about a month we'll get it out test it tune it and it'll be ready for sale absolutely all right it looks fantastic We'll see you later. As always, please like, share, and follow. But most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next week.